Hey guys, welcome back to my channel AndreHeroZinemov.com Thanks for tuning in. Today we have kind of an anniversary release. This is figure release 500 by Hot Toys and what else could it be than an Iron Man suit of course. And it's the amazing one of my beloved suits, it's the Mark 7. Um, we originally got the Mark 7 already in 2013 in plastic form. We had several different treatments and what you can see here is basically a totally new constructed sculpted suit total different paint job but lots of new fresh pieces so i will give you of course insights into uh, the accessories first the box then we go into some movie comparison scenes and i will get in some of the earlier figures to give you a direct comparison at the end all right let's get this video review started so guys you can definitely expect one of the most beautiful art boxes when un boxing this baby and look at all these details and these reflective elements going on the golden letters here at the bottom showing the magic number 500 as you can read here d27 on the side you have the stark tower shimmering through as you can see here and this is just beautiful looking and it's kind of a special treat this time around you have a black foam housing for the figure Looks like this, as you can see, quite a deep box as well, because you have, of course, lots of accessories to store in. So, and here we go, Mark 7 out of the box, and guys, believe me, this is a massive step forward compared to the first Mark 7. So right now he's in the standard mode, this is the way he is actually boxed up, and if I pan down, you will see a massive amount of accessories. So let's focus first on the left side of the picture. What you can see here is a mass assortment of different pieces, for example, to putting the suit into a different weapon or armor mode, or just to give it a more a battle damage look. So rather interesting pieces are, for example, the laser beams for the fist. It's kind of a separate device there on top of the fist. And on the back side you have the gauntlet area to put the missile launcher on it. These are totally fresh new pieces awesome sculpts and really with a lot of detail. Also cool is a new throw-in piece that I will show you on the figure later on. These are kind of the missile pods of the shoulder air flaps. Then you have different thigh armor pieces, more clean looking one on the right and the more extended one on the left. Then as I said, battle damage pieces, nicely painted and sculpted. This is for the shoulder and this is of course the arc reactor chest armor switch out piece. So next up is Rob Downey Jr. Porter. As you can see here it's from the end of the movie with a lot of battle damage going on. It has also the bruise here on the forehead and what I really like here are these tech details around the mouth area. Generally looking it's definitely a lot more rich in terms of the details compared to some other helmets from other suits and the cool thing is you can actually put the faceplate onto the helmet. So what you have here is the clean looking faceplate. So you just push it on like this. And there we go. So this is the clean looking one. It's not perfectly clean. I'm not sure if you can pick it up, but here are some little black freckles. First of all, there was a paint or factory issue, but luckily not. It's definitely meant that way. And yeah, I'm okay with it clean full clean looking would have been amazing as well besides the clean looking one you have also the battle damage faceplate and this is definitely a lot more detail in terms of the paint application you have different colors going more into the reds and orange palettes here yeah so pretty pretty cool So you basically can transform the suit in three modes. The normal armor mode, the missile launching mode and the battle damaged variant. And the fourth mode of course is the suit pod mode. There's even a Hot Toys, official Hot Toys video online showing the transformation process. But you also have everything described here. I will try it out later on. I have not put it into this mode yet, but let's see how this turns out. All the pieces that you need to do this transformation are here on the right side. So for example, you have this kind of 
um, separate torso armor, which is kind of, yeah, probably the centerpiece to put him into the suit part mode. And then you have kind of a second pair of feet. And I think this piece is rather interesting here. This is um, basically the blasters or maybe I think it's probably the targeting system that catches D'Antoni in mid-air. But you also got these two laser beams that you can add. This is, I think, a reuse from the Mark VI, if I'm not mistaken. So for the special edition you will receive exactly the missile pod version as a holographic mini variant with a small acrylic stand, cool throwing piece, high quality plastic I would say and as you can see nice intricate details here on the air flaps. So you wonder what the hell is going on now when I put Arnie in the picture and the explanation is rather obvious when we zoom down because the Mark 7 diorama base is really just a rehashed police shootout version diorama base from years ago. The only difference is that you don't have a light up feature here, so it's rather cut down and here we have a red nameplate. And of course it's missing luckily the pipe bomb, but there was quite some frustration when we saw the first time this diorama base because it was such an obvious rehash. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, there you can see some blood splatters. These were not applied on the Mark 7. Or in that, I would say, yeah, it's an okay diorama base. I mean, it fits the Avengers New York theme, but I'm not that happy how it turned out with the empty bullet shells here. That's just not fitting into the Iron Man universe, if you ask me. But other than that, quite an interesting comparison having the T-800 next to the Mark 7. Alright, let's deep dive into movie authenticity section. So basically the Mark 7 was launched at the end of the Avengers 1 movie and one of the major highlights back then was how bulky the suit was and I think the recreation of the sculpt is one of the major highlights on this Hot Toys release. You got everything covered from the bulkiness in the upper chest armor, the thickness of the armor in terms of the the depth and of course also the backside, everything is appropriate and in scale. Then second major highlight in my mind is the paint application. You will notice that it's not glossy as the usual Hot Toys Iron Man suits but it's rather like this satin red they applied on all the different parts and personally I'm a big fan of it. It looks so valuable and so high premium like. It's not like this um, gloss that they used on the plastic version that, of the figures that you will see afterwards but it's really on this yeah really smooth looking silk looking satin like look and I'm a big fan of it. So if you compare this to the actual footage on the top left corner I think they did a good match with that look from the movie because it was never high gloss either in the movie. So after the Mark 7 has been activated he immediately launches an attack against the Chitauri forces heading down to earth and he does this by activating a missile pod system beneath his shoulder guards. So the first thing I want to show you and that's a big negative on this figure is the way how these shoulder guards are placed onto the figure. It works like this, there's a small tiny hole in there uh, which basically fits this pin and somehow these two pieces just won't fit together. But yeah, uh, you will find out that it's quite hard to give, give it a snug fit. Then you have this switch out piece, these are now the missile pods, so it's basically the open version and you see a lot of detail regarding missile pods and you do the same way. Try to find the hole and push down the best way as you can but it's really hard to find the sweet spot. Sometimes I have like 10 to 20 seconds to find the right alignment. So that's a big negative on this 500 US dollar figure. So I'm really not a big fan of this system but uh, when it's attached it holds more or less in place 
and as you can see now you have all the details of these missile pods fully open and ready to shoot and attack the aliens of course you can mount the other one as well so and here you can see both missile pods attached left and right there's a bit of articulation on the back part but as soon as you pull up these back part you will immediately notice that the front part is also getting up and for me the system is a total total flaw i have no clue how this went through qc and product design department the way it's been handled now so then we have this scene where iron man attacks these flying huge alien thing and here basically I want to highlight these two pieces. You have a rocket launcher system which is extending on the top and lower side. These are two pieces. And then of course the front piece where you can attach the laser beam. So of course you can also detach it like this. So this is a nice throw-in to somehow recreate that scene. And I think that was also never included in the Mark 7 originally. Pretty sweet. So the Mark 7 has also weapon systems in the thigh armor, but not only that. So first let's highlight this cool thing here. I never saw that on um, other Iron Man suits. So you can lift up these flaps on the side of the thighs like this. And beneath, as you can see, you see some of the inner workings. And yeah, quite a neat idea. So for the thigh armor itself, you know, there's this scene where he act activates the missile parts in the thighs and then it will look like um, this here. So that's the missile pod look. And he basically flies with the missile pods activated through the flying enemy cr uh, alien creature and blasts its way through. There's also a third look that you can attach, which is a rather um, easy, clean looking one, which only features the golden part. So that's basically when the whole missile pod system has been shut down and he uh, detaches probably the silver parts. Pretty nice. And yeah, look at this paint application and these details on the leg armor. This is, this is really awesome. Also here you can Pull out of course these flaps and see a bit more of the boosters down there this is really high quality from hot toys and then another highlight on the bottom area of the figure are these missile defense systems i think these are so you can actually pull these out just, and there you can see Nicely sculpted, a lot better in quality than what we got for the original Mark 7 and I think the Mark 4 also rocked this one. But uh, please be careful, you have to put it in again if you want to articulate the thighs. So this area is really delicate and just be very careful when you um, move the legs to not scratch that area. So I'm about to do the suit pod mode transformation process and during that I found two cool things which went pretty nice and smooth. So the first thing is that as you can see here the lower calves have to re be removed and I thought this could be really a tedious process but it isn't so just pull it down slightly. And there we go. So it's actually magnetized and it's also quite straightforward for the arms because the arms you have to remove just pull it up straightly and then push it into the back side like this and there we go so these are two tricks they're also described into the manual which make your life a lot easier so and here we go this is an almost done transformation i've added two boots directly into the thigh armor and what we add now is the secondary centerpiece so um as you can see here this is the neck plug here you have the socket and you just put this over onto the actual body of the Mark 7 somehow like this and there we go so that's almost done let's quickly check what is missing so and here we go this is the suit part mode fully transformed it takes about 10 to 15 minutes 
And the cool thing is that, that you actually can reuse a lot of or almost all the parts from the actual full figure. So for example, these are the air flaps, you detach them and attach them onto the pot and so on. There are some extra pieces, for example, like the boots that you can see here on the back side. They are really extra pieces. And of course, also the center piece around the torso area that you basically plug onto the neck adapter. But overall, I definitely like the concept. As cool as this pod mode might be, there's one major drawback. You would have to buy two figures if you want to display the pod and the figure at the same time. I really love the transformation pro process, that's without a doubt. But because of this issue, I definitely recommend you to get the special edition because there you get this nice, cool pod additional display piece. Just put this next to the figure and you're good to go. But I fully understand every Hot Toys Iron Man collector, which is more on the hardcore side, investing in two free Mark 7, shelling out one and a half K. And but then you're free to go into all the different armor modes. So that's it for the pod system. Um, I will definitely take some photos now, but then transform it back into the figure. And that's it for the pod mode for my collection, at least. All right, back to the figure mode again. And this is basically the look that Iron Man has in the final moments of Avengers. So all the battle damage parts are attached here, shoulder area, chest armor, and also the faceplate. Looks pretty sweet. Then I activated LEDs and... Here I removed the golden covers and on the thighs, of course, I went to the reduced golden armor version. So then, of course, here's the unmasked portrait of Robert Downey Jr. in the battle damaged helmet. Looks pretty sweet as well, as I mentioned before. I love these intricate details around the mouth area, these tech details. Pretty sweet. And then again, of course, you can move the faceplate down. Also for this switch out portrait and it looks also nice and snug. All right, comparison time. First, let's do a quick comparison of the better damaged versions of both figures. Here we have the diecast one. On the right, we have the 2013 or 14 special edition Mark 7 all plastic but look at this beautiful paint job all the blast marks the battle damage effects the blended colors golds reds this looks pretty cool so in terms of the paint application i'm totally fine and i would even give my 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 rating towards the original special edition one but if you compare the size the overall build quality the posture I think the diecast one is a lot more advanced and you definitely feel the premium vibe to it. So then we have the main contender, which is of course the original Mark 7 here on the right side, all plastic form. Still uh, to date one of the best achievements by Hot Toys and if you compare it directly to the diecast version, of course it lacks in terms of the build quality, it lacks in terms of the size and overall complexity of the suit but it still has its features and its pros. For example, some of you might rather like this cherry red um, glossy paint application, which is really super sweet. Um, what I don't like are these silverish parts and the golden parts. I think these are much better painted on the diecast version. So having now both figures in direct comparison, let's quickly talk about if you should invest into the Mark 7 diecast if you have the plastic version. I would say so yes, it's a definite yes, a good investment and the best reason and the quickest decision that you can do in this case is just close your eyes for three seconds, open them again and I tell you, your eyes will get instantly drawn to the left side just directly to the diecast figure and this alone is a good reason why it's a far superior figure release than the original plastic one. But then of course if you can have both, why not? Because this right one figure, the plastic one, is the legacy of Hot Toys. It's one of the major achievements in the Hot Toys figure history. Then a rather unusual comparison that came to mind when I browsed through my collection was the Mark 9 on the right side, which is kind of a rehash of different Mark 7 parts, as you can see on the shoulder area and here on the torso area. 
but the thighs are a completely different breed. I think it's from the Titan release. Anyway, why I put this into the comparison is this set in kind um, paint application. Of course, this is all plastic, but as you can see, Hotos did also back then some experiments with the satin looks on Iron Man suits. So basically, it's not like a totally new thing. But uh, the one from the diecast one is even more premium quality and is definitely more into the deeper red uh, color palette. Alright, then of course we need to do a comparison with the predecessor which is the Mark VI suit here on the right side in its diecast form. And guys, I would say these two figures are probably the pinnacle of the first original seven suits. And now having them in Dinka's form this is just amazing. I mean, wow. And adding this now to the Endgame and Infinity War suits, this is for me the perfect mix of Iron Man suits. You have the old legacy suits and you have the more advanced future suits with the nanotechnology, but these two, well, they're just blowing me away. So as you can see, the Mark VI has this cherry glossy red paint application where you have the satin style look on the left side. I'm totally fine with that. Both have a perfect build quality and overall you can't go wrong with either of these two releases. Alright, a quick conclusion on the Mark 7 diecast. Of course I had some expectations regarding this release. More or less they have been met. There are some no-gos, like for example the rehashed Terminator Dorama base, I'm just not a fan of that and doesn't fit to the overall scenery uh, with these bullet shells down there. And also the unforgiven situation with this um, mechanism of the shoulder attachment parts is just not well thought through. And at that price tag I would ask a bit more quality. But overall I think the positives definitely overweigh and um, in general I would say it's a it's a really good replacement for the plastic Mark 7 if you still own that and that's your intention to do. Of course, be aware of the high prices. Right now the premium price at, at the Hong Kong sellers is crazy. You pay about double the price from the sideshow or wholesale release. So if you can wait, I would definitely recommend you to wait. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video review on the latest diecast Mark 7 and see you soon on the tube. Bye bye.